What is Texas A&M's record going to be in 2024? Las Vegas has got them at over under eight and a half wins during the preseason, but are they going to go over that? Are they going to be under that? I'll give you my thoughts right now as we're going to give you our kind of breakdown game by game now. Win, loss, win, loss, win, loss, win, loss of what Texas A&M is going to be in the 2024 season, year one of the Mike Elko era in College Station. Texas A&M fans, I love Tex Ags. You probably love Tex Ags. They, they, they do the Lord's work over there, Billy Lucci and company. In addition to making sure you're locked in over there, make sure you're subscribed right here to the On3 YouTube channel. All right, I mean, this, this is free 99. We're talking college football every single day. Would appreciate y'all being a part of this. I'll, 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 uh, I'll say that again. We want y'all a part of this. We'd appreciate it, of course, but we want y'all a part of this college football sickle community. Got a lot to talk about when it comes to Texas A&M in 2024, so make sure you are on board. Texas A&M has a new coach. That's pretty obvious. What that equates to is a new way of doing things. When you talk about A&M in 2024, it's not a rebuild. Because sometimes you bring in a new head coach and it's like, okay, we're going to knock this thing down to the studs. We're going to tear it all up. We're going to rebuild this whole thing from the ground up. That's not A&M. I think a better way to describe A&M, it's more so reboot over rebuild. Because the roster, man, you look at what they have. They got the price of admission to win in the SEC. That should not be overlooked when you talk about the Aggies in 2024. The line of scrimmage play, solid. I mean, you bring back a handful of starters on the O-line. The defensive line is going to be one of the strengths of your football team, even with the guys you lost through the portal. You went out and got Nick Scorton from Purdue, who led the Big Ten in sacks last year at a school that was not necessarily uh, one of the top schools in that conference, so that should say something about his ability. The bottom line here is it all comes down to Connor Wegman, and you're probably tired of hearing about that if you're a Texas A&M fan. I understand why. But, like, this was still a dude that was a five-star prospect out of high school. Like, injuries are part of the game. Injuries are freakish, and they happen. They're unfortunate. But, like, just because we haven't seen a ton of Connor Wegman just yet, I don't think that is any reason for us to sell our Connor Wegman stock at this point in time. The thing that I appreciate as much as Connor Wegman's ability is what they have around him. Like, very quietly, I think A&M has some of the better skill in the SEC. Le'Veon Moss and, and Ruben Owens, that's a dynamic one-two punch. You got Moose Muhammad, who I think is primed to do some big things this year. Noah Thomas. Like they, got, they got some dudes in that wide receiver room. Also, the tight end group, pretty athletic uh, and flexible operation out there. Flexible in terms of the sense of how you can utilize them in the offense with Colin Klein now running the show. I do not think Texas A&M in 2024, in any game now, will be just severely out whiteboarded. Like, I don't think they'll walk into a game and have a poor game plan and at halftime be scrambling, trying to change things and make adjustments. Like, I think Mike Elko and how intelligent he is as a football coach will pay massive dividends for them in year one paired with this roster. He did more with less at Duke. Like, I understand Riley Leonard is a good quarterback and the NFL draft really likes him. What they did at Duke, I think, deserves uh, a lot of praise and should garner a lot of excitement if you're a Texas A&M fan because you're sitting there and saying, all right, it's not the ACC, but like, if Duke can win nine football games with him as the head coach, what can A&M do with this roster? Again, ACC to SEC, tough comp, but I'm just saying, there's reason for excitement with him being your head coach. Really like that fit. So let's go game by game here. You open up with Notre Dame. This one's in College Station. Um, all the pressure is on Notre Dame. Marcus Freeman going into year three. They've done some work through the portal. They went out and got uh, Duke's quarterback, Mike Ilko's for former quarterback, and Riley Leonard. I think that you drop this game, not because I don't think a and is going to be really good, not because Kyle Field won't be on fire, but just because I think Notre Dame, for me personally, is a bit further along at this point in time, and the pressure for them, I think, will ultimately propel them in that game. So you drop the first one, you beat McNeese. Now, this is going to make some folks uh, in College Station upset, so bear with me here. You go to Florida. If this was at Kyle Field, I'd pick A&M. If it was a neutral site, I'd pick A&M. However, it's in Gainesville. We have seen many teams that are superior to Florida walk into Gainesville, lose themselves, and just faint at the moment of truth. I'm not saying that A&M falls apart, but I do think with that being in Gainesville and with all the external circumstances around Florida, all the naysayers, all the people telling you how bad they're going to be, how schedule is just so tough for them. I think Florida actually wins that game. So I think A&M uh, gets out to a uh, one and two start in that first three. Bear with me here. You beat Bowling Green. You beat Arkansas and Jerry World. 
you play Missouri. I think Missouri is going to be just really dynamic. I don't know that I see A&M keeping pace with them, so I think you drop that game. But here's where you kind of pick it up a little bit. Here's where the Mike Elko effect, I believe, really starts to show itself for uh, for the good folks out there in uh, Bryan College Station. You get a win at Mississippi State, and then you get a signature win against LSU. At home, I mean, I, I would... I would hope that there is a fair amount of juice in the stadium for this game. Have to check on the game time, but maybe it's a night game. We'll see. This is one of those moments, if you're Mike Elko, like I said, early in his career, signature win. Even more importantly, this is what we talk about on our show being a marketable moment. This is a moment where if you're talking to a recruit or a guy in the portal, or heck, your team in general, you point to this and say, hey, that's a really good football team. That's a really well-coached football team. And Brian Kelly's outfit there from Baton Rouge, like winning that game over that roster, I think points to where Texas A&M is headed. Now, it's only year one. There's a lot more, you know, that I think is ahead of them under the the Mike Elko regime. But I just, I want to make sure we're all on the same page here. Beating LSU is the moment where you say, okay, okay, that's why we hired him. I think uh, overall A&M will... Be physical in that game. I think they'll try and win the the trenches in that one. That'll be what they lean on as kind of their calling card. LSU, you know, you have some question marks about them defensively. Bottom line, we got AM beating LSU. Then you get a win on the road against South Carolina. You get a win at Auburn, another big time moment, marketable moment. Easy look ahead spot. Very easy look ahead spot. So I think that also points to the maturity that Mike Elko instills into that football team. If they get a win at Jordan Hare, one of the toughest places to play in all of the country. Then you play Texas. Listen, I just think Texas, from a roster standpoint, the talent level for them, I think, will just be superior. Now, we're, we're calling our shot here in August. So I wouldn't, I wouldn't lean too heavily on uh, our prediction here for the Texas game, the last game of the regular season. We will predict that game when it gets here. We'll break it down. We'll preview it. And we may have a different pick in that game when it arrives. But as we sit here in August, I think what Sark has done at Texas is going to be consistent from what they did in the Big 12 to now moving to the SEC. I like Texas to win that football game. So that puts A&M at 8-4 and four in Mike Elko's first season. Just so we're all on the same page here, 8-4 and four would match Jimbo Fisher's best year at Texas A&M, not counting the COVID year. That's a great jumping off point. And Mike Elko hasn't even gotten his guys in yet. Even more importantly, he hasn't instilled, I believe, his persona into this team just yet. And that's the thing that we talk about a lot on this show, man. The persona of your leadership at some point in time becomes the persona of your football team. What Mike Elko brings to the table is exactly what AM has been missing, in my opinion, over the last few seasons. Talent hasn't been the issue. How, how stale of a talking point is that for AM fans? Oh, they got great talent. They got this, they got players, they got that. What have they been missing? To me, It's culture from the outside looking in from what I can tell. It is execution. It is toughness. It is schematics. It's all those things that I think Mike Elko majors in that he now brings with him to College Station. Very important we say this. With Mike Elko, the hiring of him, you are banking on the baking over the microwave. Like I think a great comp is Matt Rule at Nebraska. He, I think, has a very similar thing he brings to Nebraska as Mike Elko brings to Texas A&M, all those intangibles I just mentioned. That takes a second for it to really integrate itself into your football team. So for that same reason, I think Nebraska is going to be a lot better than they were last year. Spoiler alert. Same deal with with Texas A&M. Get excited about this year. If they buy in early and it becomes a thing where it's a Mike Elko coached football team, a Mike Elko football team, a signature football team with how he operates and all those things I mentioned that he brings to the table show themselves in year one, could definitely win 9, 10 games. But I think the exciting part for AM fans is the trajectory, the projection, the long haul with what he's going to bring to the table out there at AM. i I'll say one more thing here. This year is about the foundation for AM. This is about instilling those habits and kind of laying the groundwork for what a Mike Elko Texas A&M program is going to be, not just team, program over the course of the next few years. I think it's worth noting, and something we said when he got hired, that Mike Elko gets it. 
Like, he gets Texas A&M. One of the reasons why I thought he was the guy for the job from the jump. When he got announced as the head coach in that introductory press conference, and they're all singing the war hymn, you know, arms over each other's shoulders, Mike Elko knew the words because he had been at A&M before. Mike Elko gets Texas A&M. Now, what does that account for when it comes to wins and losses remains to be seen, but I do think it puts him in better position than anybody else you could have hired that'd be trying to figure out what a and all about and what that fan base is about. Because we'll say this, man, a and a different beast. In a beautiful, unique to college football way, a and is its own beast. And to get that as a head coach, your first day on the job as the head coach, that matters, and I think that's going to benefit him in the long run. At the very least, from an approval rating for a and and even probably more importantly, from an expectation level. So, a and going to be an exciting year, a foundational year for the Mike Elko regime. Let me know your thoughts, though, what you got a and at. Again, I got them 8-4. Would not be shocked if they won nine games. Ten games would probably be, uh, okay, hey, let's get, the, let's get the party started here. I mean, let's, let's go ahead and give Mike Elko the key to College Station. Even with that being said, though, excited to hear y'all's thoughts and excited to hear your record prediction for the Aggies. Again, subscribe here, the On3 YouTube channel. Got a lot headed your way for college football season about the college football landscape as a whole and have to imagine a lot about your Aggies as well. For Nick Britt producing the show, for myself, J.D. Pakel, we love y'all. We appreciate y'all. We're going to keep this party rolling, and we will see y'all next time. Hey, y'all. Thanks so much for watching. Subscribe to the channel here to make sure you don't miss an episode of The Hard Count. Also, be sure to check out other videos on the On3 YouTube channel.